What's going on guys? Freezing cold on two feet today. Uh, today guys, we are doing a special video. We're breaking down my top five favorite motorcycles that I rode in 2021 first ride special. So as a lot of you guys know, we have a series here on the channel called First Rides. Been doing it for a very long time. It's where I go over to my buddies over at Mountain Motorsports. They let me borrow a motorcycle and I ride it for the first time. You can see where the, uh, the titling came from. So I've ridden a lot of motorcycles this year and inevitably I'm going to like some and I'm going to not like some. Uh, today's video, I want to go over my top five favorites and I've even got some honorable mentions because I couldn't boil it down to just five. So without further ado, number five. So conveniently, number five on our list is the 2021 Yamaha MT-09 SP that we actually still have on loan here at the shop. Uh, a couple of things that I really loved about this motorcycle that stood out a lot for me. It was probably, of all the motorcycles I rode, probably the best bike when it came to weight and power and how balanced the motorcycle felt. I don't think I rode another motorcycle the entire year that had the level of balance that the MT-09 SP had. Now granted, I haven't ridden the MT-09, so it could have that balance as well. Another one of the things that I loved a lot about the MT-09 SP is the electronics package that it comes with, specifically the lift control. I loved and it felt so natural and so unobtrusive when that motorcycle, regardless of the mode you had it in, when you just crank the throttle and the bike just artificially keeps the front wheel at a certain location. For you guys that have ridden MT-09s before, you understand the level of power that bike has and how punchy that power is. That bike, the MT-09 SP specifically, is the conglomeration of like electronics being needed on a motorcycle with mix of a power plant that needed electronics to hold it back. Now, a lot of you psychopaths out there might say, you shouldn't tame the MT-09 down. I ride with no electronics. I hope you live a happy and healthy life. But yeah, guys, between the balance of power and weight and that electronic suite that that bike really needed, the MT-09 SP is easily in our top five. Unfortunately, it's number five. Moving on. Next up on the list, number four slot is going to Ducati's 2021 V4S Street Fighter. I was kind of late to the game on the Street Fighter. I wanted to ride one for a while. It just never worked out in the schedule. I was like two years late on this thing and oh my goodness. This motorcycle is everything I wanted in a Street Fighter V4S. It was powerful, it was hot, and it was amazing. Everything, all the characteristics that you have in a Panigale V4S, all the electronics, all of the suspension, put into a platform that's actually rideable on the daily was just a dream to get to experience. Now, I'm kind of priced out of the Street Fighter V4S. If I could afford it, I would have one of those things every day, but I'm too much of a cheap ass to have one of those things in my garage. The Street Fighter is also, in my personal opinion, probably one of the best motorcycles looks wise on the market and it can perform to match those looks. Other stuff you're getting with this motorcycle is an electronic suite that is absolutely top notch. And I think Ducati is probably in the lead right now for screens and how you navigate your electronics. We're seeing a lot more electronics get into motorcycles, but if you can't navigate to change those electronics, then what the hell is the point of having all the electronics? I feel like Ducati's doing the best job as of right now, and uh, I'm very sad that I don't want to afford a V4S to have and ride every day. I'm just gonna sit here and think on that. While I think on this, let's go to the next number. All right, guys, number three on our list is the 2019 Kawasaki Z900 RS. You didn't think a Kawasaki was going to be in this list, did you? You were wrong. Uh, so, guys, here's some of the things that I absolutely love about the Z900 RS. 
One, similar to the MT-09 that I was talking about, I feel like the 900 range is probably the perfect level of power for street use. The Z900 RS was something that I didn't expect to ride as good as it actually did because I thought it was just going to be a pretty bike. If you guys don't know, the RS, as you can see, is that cafe style old school motorcycle look. I thought it would be a motorcycle that just looked cool. Meanwhile, I get on that motorcycle and it performs absolutely beautifully for a road bike. I also love the body position. I'm kind of slightly aggressive, but I'm still like in a comfortable position. And that mixed with a good seat means I could ride that bike every single day and love it. Uh, obviously the looks are a huge deal on the RS uh, model. The old school look mixed with new age technology is something that I am seriously in love with. And it's got me considering getting an XSR in the future, which is Yamaha's cafe -y old school looking bike. I rode this thing, expected it to just look cool. It ended up performing phenomenally. I also love that the look is not just on the outside of this motorcycle. If you look at the tack, it also has the old school gauge mixed with a kind of new school middle area. I love that the looks are all over the motorcycle. Kawasaki didn't just stop with making the outside of the bike look good. They made even the tack for the rider and while they're riding still give you that old school vibe. I just love the whole vibe of this bike and I want it in my life every single day. Despite the fact that red is kind of a big deal on the channel, I think I could change green if I needed to. So Kawasaki, congrats on making a phenomenal motorcycle that would be a great everyday motorcycle, especially if you're into that old school look. Moving on to the top two. All right, guys, uh, number two slot. You're not going to be surprised. Uh, I'm giving it to the Yamaha R7. No! It didn't make it into number one. What's happening? So as you guys know, I was privileged enough to go out to the R7 launch where I got to try the bike out on the street. Afterwards, Yamaha let us loan this thing for a month or so. So it's safe to say I've got a lot of experience on the R7. The R7 has a lot of controversy going around it about like it's not faster than the R6 and all this stuff. Despite all of that, the R7 is still the number two slot for me because the, Yamaha is the first company, in my opinion, that has successfully made a super sport that is good for the street. Every other 600 style super sport in its class or in the super sport class that we're all used to with the inline fours, none of them are good for street riding. They are all track weapons that people deal with on the street because they want to look a certain way riding a super sport. Yamaha is the first company to take their CP2 engine, give the people this super sport look that they want, and it's actually usable on the road. Is it faster than an R6? Absolutely not. Is it a phenomenal beginner track bike that is actually the super sport look that's usable on the road? It absolutely is. And if you're asking me, I'm sure there's all the guys out there that are like, I want a, you know, a super sport 600 that revs to the moon and back, but you don't use that. You want it for, most people want it for the look and they don't care, they'll deal with how it rides. I, I feel like the R7 is probably the best of all those worlds. You get all the cool looks, but you get the usability of the CP2 engine. If I've told you guys anything, it's how I absolutely love Yamaha CP2 engine. I love every bike that has a CP2 in it, even though I haven't ridden the Tenere, but I mean, T7, come on, right? Coming to you 2022. Anyway, guys, R7 gets the number two slot because it's the bike that it needed to be. You know, it's, it's not trying to, Yamaha's got the R6. If they wanted to continue doing the R6, they would have, but they know how most of you guys are out there riding. And that's why we have the R7. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the number one slot. If you guys think you know what the number one slot is, leave it in the comments and we'll see who's right. Don't you skip ahead, because I think a lot of you guys are going to be surprised. All right, guys. The winner of our 2021 first ride special of our top five favorite bikes is a bike that I don't think you guys would have guessed. This bike shocked me at how much I loved it, and it has opened my mind to a side and a style of riding that I previously 
didn't, wouldn't have even batted it an eye at. The bike. It is the 2022 Triumph Rocket 3R. This motorcycle, of all the bikes we got on loan this year, I have to say the Rocket 3R was by far my favorite. It was the one I put the most miles on. It was the one I enjoyed the most. And it was a muscle cruiser. Before this year, I had never really ridden a muscle cruiser other than a Diavel in the past. For whatever reason, the Diavel never felt like a muscle cruiser. When I rode the Sportster S this year and I rode the Rocket 3R, my brain felt like it expanded to understand a, a market of motorcycle that I previously hadn't, but I really enjoyed. And to be fair, if uh, we had gotten a sports dress in the shop to be able to ride it around and do an actual first ride on it, it might have been in this list, but we haven't done a first ride. This is a first ride special. This motorcycle, apart from being the largest production motorcycle engine ever made, it's a whale of a motorcycle. It rides exactly like you would think, and I loved every mile I put on that motorcycle. I took it to the mountains. I took it on the highway. I took it to the city. I rode it all the damn time, and I never found a situation where I didn't like that motorcycle. The way the power is delivered and just shoots you forward into oblivion was intoxicating. The camera car footage from the Rocket 3R, we had the blacked out model. I gotta be honest guys, I don't think I've ever watched camera car footage of me riding a bike and felt cooler than I did when I watched what I look like on the 3R. I don't know what it was, the bike's got a vibe and I'm vibing with it. And not only does it, is that the way you look while riding, you feel like that while you're riding that motorcycle. I, I can remember the first ride I took on that bike. You know, I'm sitting in that muscle cruiser position. My arms are kind of straight out in front of me. My legs are like mid controlled. And I'm looking around like, I feel cool as shit right now. That never went away the entire time I rode that motorcycle. Not only does it have all that power, the electronics in that Rocket 3R make it rideable. And you still can lawn dart off the back of that bike if you are not holding on for dear life, but the ride of that bike, I, I miss that bike more than anything. I will put that this way. This is how I decided that this bike was number one, is if I took all the first rides that I did, which bike do I wish I could still be riding right now? And I gotta I gotta give it to the Rocket 3R. I'm not gonna lie. I, I had such a good time on that bike. And maybe it was the novel feel of being in a different body position and enjoying it. To this day, I don't even really know what all clicked with me with that Rocket, but uh, I, I got to give the number one slot to the Rocket. Now, before we get done, I do want to give some honorable mentions to motorcycles. They were all so phenomenal, they just, they just didn't make the list. First off, I got to give a nod to literally the most expensive motorcycle I've ever put my butt in, and that was the 2021 Ducati Superleggera V4. It's like $100,000 worth of motorcycle. Kind of crazy to ride. Very light, but very stable. Didn't understand it. It was strange, but it was cool as shit to ride. Next up, uh, I, I got to give a nod to the 2021 Ducati Multistrada V4S. You guys know I've got my love affair with the Multistrada. I got to do a first ride on a V4S, and it was literally everything I wanted. V4S, mwah, I love you. I want you so bad. All right, other honorable mentions is Triumph's 2022 Speed Triple RS. The Super Sport in a naked platform that bike is going to surprise anybody that rides it. We still have it in the shop. I'm sad that I didn't put more miles on that thing. It was a it was a very surprising motorcycle, and I love, love the way it looks. Honorable mention for you. Still love you. Final honorable mention of the 2021 bikes. It's the MT-07. I mean, shit. It, man yamaha made such a good little motorcycle with that i don't think there's a single person out there watching this video that could not go sit on a yamaha mt07 go ride and come back without smiling if you're experienced just wheelie it around right if you're not experienced it's got a phenomenal amount of power it is such a a good motorcycle and I stand behind it's probably one of the best motorcycles on the market for the price 
right now. I am not going to let the MT-07 not make it in this list. Yamaha, you absolutely chef kissed it with the uh with the mt07 great job on that bike all right guys that's our top five uh favorite bikes we rode this year but before we get out of here i want to bring bo in he's been on a couple of uh press trips he's rode some motorcycles bo tell us what your favorite was this year all right favorite one we've had in the shop no that you've rode this year no that i rode this year so we didn't do a video on this one uh but we did get invited out to do a break-in run mm -hmm. on uh some triumphs and uh, Tiger, I think it was the GT Low was on, the 900. It's my first introduction to an ADV bike, but also the new T-Plane uh, that Triumph has. And it sounds delightful. And then surprising, it came in at the last minute, <laughs> but the Speed Triple RS is probably one of my favorite bikes I've ridden. What? Yeah, I love the triples, I mean, just in general. Uh, the quick shifter was uh, just the butteriest of butter, and uh, it did not break my back when I rode it. This is, I didn't even know this, and I work with you every day. Okay, cool. Speed triple. I should Maybe I should have made that in my top five. I feel bad that I didn't include that in the top five. All right, guys, that's it for the top five bikes we rode this year. What was the favorite bike you rode this year? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm Chase on Two Wheels. This has been 2022. We got one more video coming out, and we are done. Make sure to hit that like button. Love you guys long time. Okay, goodbye. That's been so fun. Outro crew, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Love you guys long time. Put OC in your comment down below. Make sure to hit the like button and let us know what was your favorite first drive that you watched of us this year.